Hello there and welcome to the Mario Matter, your favorite Nintendo podcast, episode number 92 with your host, M. Swizzle or Max. My friends, we have an exciting guest today. This is the first guest I've had in a while, and hopefully we will have many more in the future. We have a returning guest today, but I'll get to that very soon. I want to give you a quick rundown of what this episode is going to be. So. First up, we talk about Nintendo news with our guest. It's a great time. I'll stop saying with our guest. We have Charlie from C.com, the fan favorite returning guest on today's show. We first dive into Nintendo news with him. After that, we dive into the title of the podcast, what you have clicked on the show for. We dive into does Nintendo Switch 2 need backwards compatibility. It's a big topic. It's the one that you all wanted us to discuss. It's juicy and we have a great conversation there. After that, we dive into answering your questions. You have asked us. I put out a little Q&A thing and you all asked us questions. It was great. It was a real funny episode. I record this intro after it's all done. You will enjoy it. Trust me. You don't even have to like, honestly, my grandparents could watch and have a great time. And they don't know not, They don't know who Mario is. Like, it's a great time. It's a great, funny show. One of our funniest, one of our best. You will enjoy it. With that said, this next segment here is introducing our guest, Charlie, or C.com, and going over Nintendo news. Every part of this is great. You don't want to miss it. Let's go ahead. Let's not make you, the listener, the great, valued listener, wait any longer. Let's go ahead. Let's get to the podcast episode. Welcome to the Mario Matter, the number one Nintendo podcast. Ladies and gents, our guest today is our first ever, first ever returning guest on the Mario Matter. He is a fellow Nintendo YouTuber. He is closing in on 300,000 YouTube subscribers and when I was on his YouTube page, I looked at his YouTube bio and it said, Funny Gamer Man, and I couldn't agree more. It is Charlie from C.com. How's it it's, going? It's me. It's been going good. I haven't changed that bio since day one. And, you know, I'm just, I'm glad. I'm glad it's held true for, for these many, many years. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going good. It is going good. Uh, I'm seeing what we're going to talk about today. Some pretty interesting stuff. And I, I also have some other things to add to that. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm excited, man. You are our first returning guest. Yeah, I was, I was actually going to ask. I was going to say, am I like the first returning? You are the first returning. I, I'm not sure who else would ever return. But, you know, you are a fan favorite. You are a fan favorite. A fan favorite. You weren't, uh, you know. You weren't at one point. Now you're not. You are a fan I favorite. I wasn't universally hated. I see. Gotcha. <laughs> Last time we spoke on the podcast, I introduced you by talking about your YouTube and your shorts and cool things like that. And, you know, before we get into the Nintendo news and stuff like that, I do want to talk about you for a minute. All you, right. since the last time we spoke, have what I would call or had a major announcement. Do you know what I'm referring to? Are you referring to the fact that I'm a game developer and making a video game? I am referring to the fact that Team.com is coming out with a video game for PC and maybe, maybe, I can, okay, I cannot stress this enough, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> Switch and maybe more platforms or not just just to switch let's 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 just keep it at maybe switch for now <laughs> let's let's just keep maybe it there maybe switch gotcha gotcha and the game yeah. is called get up it's a game about hold your breath getting up so that's all fun i understand that it is in very like early stages of development i would imagine very early. yes can you give us any any one sentence, any any short Ooh. update on how it's going. I could, I could. Let me just think, so I don't. So let me pull up the planning documents really quickly, so I can. Oh boy. I can take a we're look getting, at. Uh, we're getting the exclusive, and then after that, we'll get into the news here. Let's yeah, see. Let's let's, see. let's hear it. So the game is obviously about getting up. It, people have seen on on the official Get Up Twitter page at Get Up Game. By the way, if you want to check it out, uh, there's been some music tracks there. I think four in total that have already been released. 
Uh, and there is also the uh, a bit of gameplay, uh, just showing the character moving around and all that stuff. But let me see, where is my planning? There it is. Just give us one quick cryptic update that comes to mind. Okay. I, I've said this before, but it was at the end of a live stream. But you will be able to parry in this game. Oh, a C.com reference. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. And it's about getting up, and you can parry. I I don't know what it would be about. But, I mean, I do. I'm lying, but what would it be about? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's good enough for me, man. So I'm excited. Everyone buy Get Up when it releases in sometime in the future. 2036. <laughs> Give him time, okay? We're not going to rush Team.com mm -hmm. uh, to put out Get Up. But we will be buying once it does come out. That's great to hear. Indeed. Anyways, let's get to our Nintendo news. You know, I, I imagine people have clicked on this podcast for some fun Nintendo news. And boy, do we have that for you. So normally, uh, I'm not sure if you know this, C.com. I have a hat normally where I like pick pieces of news out of the hat and read ah. them off. I don't have it today because I feel like if I did that, this show would be too one-sided. Like you don't have a hat as well. Like it would just be me. I have this gamer hat. Oh, uh, well, I mean. Hold on. Or like a, like a Mario hat? Next time. We'll I could run and get it. mine and pull out imaginary pieces of paper. I don't have my things printed out. Though, nah, so yeah, I don't really work. Next time. Third episode. On, on our next episode, we're going to have it. All right. But because of that, I have put all of our pieces of news in order. Sweet. Shall we go over the first one? All right. It's a big one, man. All right. So I'll read how these guest episodes work is I will read the topic, give info for the listeners, and then we will discuss it and break it down and have a funny gamer man conversation right. as always. So our first topic of the day has to do with Google. A Google employee has been leaking Nintendo games and they've now been busted. So this piece of news came out, I believe last week. And um, this, this, this came out, or earlier this week, this came out as part of like one whole big thing. And it was found that it's kind of what it says. A Google employee was caught leaking a Nintendo game. And the game in question was actually Yoshi's Crafted World. So this was before E3 2017, but you know, before the game even had an official name, whoever this Google employee was took a screenshot of the privated video on Nintendo's YouTube channel because they're, you know, a Google employee. They have access to that. They took the picture, sent it to a friend, and the friend posted it on Reddit and said, quote, my friend work at Google and he send this photo to me. It's a video that it's already in Nintendo channel and is going to be public after the reveal. And the leak was true. However, it's said to be non-intentional. Charlie, I don't know how you send a screenshot of a game to somebody and, you know, they post it and this is all non-intentional. What are you sending this unknown games your friend for yeah that was me my bad <laughs> well guys that's it for the mario <laughs> no 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 oh no uh, i mean okay first off hilarious story all right i think i think it's even crazier and makes it even more funny that it's yoshi's crafted world of all games um, <laughs> i didn't even think about that right right i mean okay shout us the good feel y'all are the goats but goats i would not be getting getting into the youtube back end to leak yoshi's crafted world all right with all due respect no uh i mean with with that you can't say that wasn't it was non-intentional on google's part but the person who got the image clearly was intending to do that so indeed and like you said if you're gonna go into the back end of nintendo youtube circa e3 2017 <laughs> Yeah, let's just like Yoshi's Crafted World, <laughs> like leak yeah. Metroid Prime Four or something, which was actually announced right before Yoshi's yes. Crafted World in the presentation. Yeah, oh, so man. it was posted on Reddit. No one believed the guy, and then they all came back and said, "Oh, you were right." The world, the world yearns for Yoshi's Crafted World. Apparently, if this happened to you, you were the Google employee. If you, if it actually was you, 
would you be crapping your pants if that came out? Like, you know, your your friend posts that on Reddit and you're the cause of it. I would just um I'd go like mm, and then I would like quit my job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, I would probably also quit on the spot because that's what's coming next. I mean, I mean, it it actually didn't. He stayed with the company. He didn't get fired. But crazy. Gotta gotta quit your job after that one. You gotta <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta hit the dash. You gotta go. But that's the first piece of news. Bit of a funny story that came out even though that was back in 2017. Next piece of news, I really want to get your thoughts on, Charlie, because All right. a credible Nintendo leaker has discussed multiple upcoming Nintendo games, potentially, on Twitter. So this leak comes from Leaker Midori on Twitter. Are you familiar with Midori, Charlie? Yes, uh, I, I am. I've been, I've been around, you know, Twitter. Uh, oh, but it's a, no. Um, so I, I've seen all this. You know, my my general rule with like leakers and talking about it, especially just like on my channel, is like rule one of Fight Club is not to talk about Fight Club. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I, I'm good. I'm good talking about it here. This is this is this is where I go to gossip, basically. And the, exactly. And the first rule of Fight Club is not to talk about Fight Club. Is just to get people under the uh, understanding that you're supposed to break the rules. Anyways. Uh, so with this, with this leaker, I don't think they've gotten anything wrong, right? Very, very credible. Uh, same with, you know, my favorite bird and beans protagonist, Pioro. Pioro. Uh, and all these code names, they don't really give us much to go off of other than just they are in development. For some context, the tweet does say, so the first of the three tweets says there's, there's a project at a Nintendo in development with the code name Anna and Elsa is the code name for Switch Sports. There's a lot of people saying this is Switch Sports Resort. You're on the train there. Like you, you believe that the project in development with the code name Anna. Uh, yes, with, with Elsa being the code name for Switch Sports. I I gotta see. Like no, it, that Nintendo would not make a haha Disney Frozen reference for <laughs> Nintendo Switch Sports. All right, that has to be. Like an acronym or something. <laughs> I don't think that if those two are related at all. I mean, you get like a Switch Sports Resort re- uh, revealed at the Nintendo Direct on the 19th of June. Oh, boy. At, at the 19th at the 19th of June. I, remember, I said June 20th last last time I was on here for the big Nintendo Switch presentation or Switch 2 presentation. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm bringing it back a day. So we're June 19th now. But yeah, it's still technically okay. June twentieth in Japan. So, <laughs> if we see Nintendo Switch Sports at that, I'm gonna mm-hmm. laugh so hard. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it it rings kind of hollow to me because Wii Sports was totally free, and Switch Sports was not. Yeah, that is that is true. Maybe Switch Sports. Hold on, yep. hold the phone. What if it's a pack in with the Switch too? That would be great. But my my thought is like if if Wii Sports was free, you know they made Wii Sports Resort, which was not free. I feel like that was like okay, you like Wii Sports. If you want some more, here you go. With Switch Sports and Switch Sports Resort, I feel like that can't be on the same console because because it, it's it's like it's like making a Mario Maker one and like a Mario Maker Deluxe both on the wii u like it makes no sense yeah. it's like that could be like dlc to switch sports it shouldn't be a brand new thing mm-hmm. what what i'm thinking i was actually looking at the just now the release dates for wii sports and wii sports resort and then switch sports mm-hmm. so obviously wii sports 2006 and then resort is in 2009 um then switch sports or did i say wii sport oh, whatever you know yeah okay. uh switch sports released in 2022 and so yes. yet again if it's going to be a launch title for the Switch 2, whatever this is, I don't think it's going to be a Switch Sports Resort. I think I think uh, getting a sequel to Nintendo Land as a launch title has higher odds than a Switch Sports Resort. But I think it would be prime time because, you know, there's that March kind of 2025, a- April 2025 kind of release window where a lot of people have speculated the Switch 2 to launch. I mm-hmm. think that could work. 
I kind of disagree, man. And, and you know, I don't like to disagree with you. I think they could make a Switch Sports Resort because that would bring in the buys. People are people people are into that kind of stuff. That would. That would bring in the buys. But it is kind of weird. Like you just put out a, a Switch Sport. I don't know. They'd have to improve like a lot of things for, you know, to make it brand new and to make people want to buy it. It'd be a weird launch title. I would accept it though. But also, like you said, like Nintendo one to switch. Land. One to switch. Yeah. They they need some sort of tech demo. It's either, as you said, Nintendo Land, three four switch. <laughs> It'd be or, wait, there's yep. one two switch, everybody one two switch. Then there was No, I think we go negative one, negative two. I think we go into the negatives. Okay, negative one, negative two switch coming. Mm -hmm. Or you make a Switch sports game for a launch title, for a tech demo launch title. They kind of need yeah. one. That'd be great. So we could see that. The other two uh, code names that have been leaked by Midori here, there's one game, game being worked on, in, and the code name is Edward. And Midori speculates, not confirmed, this might right. be related to the rumors of a new Z Zelda series title. <sighs> Mm. You believe it? Do you want one right. of these? Well, uh, there, there's been a, a rumor going around. I don't think we have it on the list, but I swear, okay. dude, trust me. I saw it somewhere <laughs> that um, a GameCube game and a 3DS game are going to be brought to Switch in 2025. I saw uh, just, just like this year with Thousand Year Door Remake, which was so good, and Luigi's Mansion 2, which is eventually mm -hmm. coming out. And what I think... This is because I'm fairly certain the project uh, code name for the Link's Awakening remake was Richard. Yes, I believe yeah. that's right. And that was uh, released by Grezzo, if I am correct. I think that sounds right. I yes. think you're on point here. And all I'm saying is that uh, so that released in 2019, Metopia. Um, uh, released in 2021, which they also did the uh, kind of remake for. And then I'm assuming that they might be doing the remake of, or not the remake, the, re what? Oh, I don't even know anymore. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which mm -hmm. will be coming out this year. Yes. Uh, but if they're not, then I think it's highly likely that uh, whatever they're making um, with this, this new code name is going to be uh, that remake of a 3DS game because that's mm -hmm. they kind of cook with those. They do. Um, of either, I think it could be a link between worlds. That's that's what I'm mm -hmm. that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, that's the rumored one. I saw the uh, leak that you're, that you're talking about. The it was GameCube game and, th and 3DS game, right? Yeah. I saw it, but I think that, and no offense, I think the guy who reported it, I think. Uh, earlier this year he was like guys there's a direct a full direct in february dir <laughs> there's there's an indie world in march and the switch 2 will be revealed in june and he wasn't right so i never reported that leak but i see maybe this is i i don't know i would welcome a 3ds mm -hmm. remake i would welcome a gamecube you know whatever remaster remake i don't really know i would, I would welcome these things I think if you're bringing any 3DS game over, a link between worlds would definitely do. People love Zelda remakes. Mm -hmm. That would they that do. would do good. For I'm sure. a big enjoyer. I've been waiting for uh, uh, what's the word? Wind Waker remake. Not like the Wind Waker HD. <laughs> Not Wind Waker. Don't don't get it twisted with oh. Wind Waker HD. All right. A I, full I got a scale twisted. remake of Wind Waker or Ocarina of Time, I guess, in the Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom game engine. All right. That's that's all I want. That's, I pray to the Nintendo gods that be. I feel like that's a big ask, no? I feel like it's going to be a Switch 2 launch title, or at least launch year. That would be cool. <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's been since day one after Tears of the Kingdom. Like, what's next? Full scale remake, like fi Final Fantasy VII style remake of either Ocarina of Time or Wind Waker. I don't see them doing Majora's Mask because. To be honest, Majora's Mask gameplay sucks without a guide. <laughs> and um, Twilight Princess is great, but I still feel like you don't really need to make much changes to Twilight Princess uh, mm -hmm. to have it have it work. And it really works like with the linear style of that. And then Skyward yep. Sword, obviously, just Skyward Sword's perfect. You don't need to touch Skyward Sword. It's it's great nah. unless you like really want to make changes to it and don't have any loading zones. Uh, mm -hmm. But 
Yeah, that's why I feel like Wind Waker because A, I'm biased and B, I think it would be cool. And then Ocarina of Time because it's Ocarina of Time. Listen, I would buy both of those. Do it, Nintendo, please. Yeah. Also, there was one more code name. Uh, our last one here. And Midori says there's a game project at Nintendo with the code name Spiral. By researching the data I have received in the last month, it is very likely that this code name, sorry, that this is the code name for the next entry in the Splatoon series. What's your kind of, I've never gotten your take on Splatoon. Splatoon, fantastic game series. I don't think it's, I guess, I don't think it's been long enough since Splatoon 3, which is great mm -hmm. and I still play it for Splatoon 4. Yep. But I will say this. Oh boy. This is going to be a free to play game on the Switch 2 that is a Splatoon Battle Royale. The spiral is like the giant ink storm closing in on whatever area they're playing in. That's a prediction right there. I don't know, man. They make too much money off of Splatoon. But if they have like Skins, in game transactions, yeah, microtransactions. Exactly. Yeah, I spent $30 on the Lethal Company skins in Fortnite and I feel no remorse. But I don't know, because like, what if you sell 10 million Splatoon copies? That's what, 60 times 10? Six mm -hmm. trillion dollars. Whereas Six if, trillion you, dollars is crazy. if you make it free, you kind of have to hope that people spend money on the game. And like, but then you also you still release Splatoon 4 proper. Oh, like a full on spinoff. I thought that you were talking about like the whole series. Yeah, this is this is just like a little something. It's just a little something, you know? Nintendo needs to try the free-to-play model. They don't have it, right? Well, I mean, like, mobile games, but, like, nothing else. No, I mean, Super Kirby Clash. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, something like that. They, they need more of those, because, like, if Nintendo made, like, a game even... I don't know, Fortnite's huge. Even, like, a, like a tenth of the size of Fortnite... You're you're making bank. Yeah. Like people are just buying Mario skins and, and stuff like that. Like or that'd even be better. Maybe that Splatoon is like the the about maybe it's like a twenty dollar eShop game, right? Or like yeah. a DLC for maybe it's uh let's say Splatoon three is brought over backwards compatibility on Switch Two. We're gonna talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Um yep. But you say, oh, here's some DLC only on Switch 2 because we need the extra processing power to render 100 Inklings on the screen at once, right? So it's a $20 DLC for that Battle Royale mode. The only thing is, I feel like that's a bit hard because, you know, people buy the Switch 2 and then they're like, wait, I have to buy a Switch 1 game to, to like play the DLC. I don't know. I feel like it might not work. They could just make Splatoon 3 Deluxe. Pull a Mario Kart. <laughs> I don't know. But By the time the Switch 2 comes out, it's going to be roughly the same amount of time from Mario Kart 8's release to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's release. So anything's possible. Yeah. I mean, like Splatoon 2 was almost a Splatoon 1 port. That, that was two years later. It was. Wasn't it? So they yeah, could. Barely, barely over two years. <laughs> yeah. So they, they could do that. I don't know. But Splatoon is great. I would love some sort of battle royale. Um it's just kind of hard to see. I, yeah. I don't know. I was going to say it's hard to see because they don't want like Luigi holding guns and stuff. Like if if you can do it in Splatoon, I think it's fine. Yeah. Keep it. Keep it limited to Splatoon characters. You They get like, oh, buy use 10 squid bucks and you can get the cool Mario hat for your inkling. Whoa. That'd be dope. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That'd be great. And they can even offer like things like, hey, this is the free to play game. If you buy Splatoon 3, you get... 10 billion squid 10 bucks. 10 billion you know, squid bucks. <laughs> whatever it is, right? So they can they can do that. But I do want to get to our next piece of news because this is very fun. Speaking of free-to-play things, speaking of microtrans... Can you buy things in Pokemon Sleep? Give me a moment. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> this is very similar. While he researches, I will read the news here. The news topic here is... Nintendo has recently patented, which means like they've filed their trademark so no one can copy it. They've filed a patent for a Mario sleeping mobile game. Now, this, I believe, these photos from this patent, which I'll throw on the screen for our video listeners, I believe they surfaced last year too, but they're making the rounds again because Nintendo is putting this Mario sleep game into action so it's gonna be i would assume 
very similar to Pokemon Sleep. And it's pretty much, uh, basically, I have a quote, going to calculate the health information relating to sleep and or fatigue of the user. Charlie, what are your thoughts and what did you research? I mean, if I use that, I barely get enough sleep. I'll be in minus world. Like I'll be. Yeah. Dude, uh, it won't go good for me. But I looked up, you can indeed buy things uh, with, you know, in real life moolah in Pokemon sleep. So I think this is just, this could even be just a reskin of of Pokemon sleep with the funny haha Yahoo mm-hmm. man. I wouldn't be shocked if it's like, very similar. This is like the Pikmin Bloom of Pokemon Go. Do you know what that means? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's no. That's fair. Yeah, like I get it's that. the same. It's a, it's a similar concept, um, but it's mm-hmm. Pikmin. I get like I don't know. Here's my thing: if you're already using Pokemon Sleep, I don't know how many people are going to transition to a Mario Sleep app unless there's like a major. Yeah crazy difference which i don't really see happening it's a sleeping app you're asleep while you're using it i don't see a big difference coming Mm -hmm. unless you have do not have pokemon sleep and just are unaware of that game's Mm -hmm. existence you see mario sleep and you're like oh my god it's a a mario bros 2 reference no way right so yeah i mean here's my thing i do you use pokemon sleep I think I installed the game, had it running once, and then forgot to turn on the application before I went to bed. (laughs) Here's my thing. I don't want a charging phone on my bed next to my pillow. Something is going to catch on fire. It's going to burn the house down. That's, yeah. The radiation is going straight to your brain. Exactly. (laughs) Like, honestly. The 5G waves, they're getting in my brain. (laughs) I just said that, like, overheating, like, like the whole fire scenario. My actual biggest thing is I've always heard it's just not good to sleep next to your phone. It's it's not just because you know these things. For one, here's here's my phone. Yep. they don't um they don't have fans on them. So like a bit of bit of computer knowledge. Usually you have fans in your computer to disperse the heat once it's attached to a something called a heat sink, which is just a metal thing that obviously conducts heat well and disperses the heat along a you know really spread out area so you don't have that really condensed point of the cpu frying eggs basically mm-hmm. um phones don't have fans like at all just just zero yep. so that's why your phone always gets so hot when you're doing different miscellaneous tasks and obviously just computer processing in general i think your phone's going to give off give off some you know good old waves and it's not so good to have a prolonged exposure to those waves yeah especially if um if they're right by your brain (laughs) (laughs) exactly it's yeah i've I've just always been told it's bad so i never ever tried these apps but i mean if it happens because it's a mario one i might give it a try like just one night because it does sound nice see that's why people are gonna get it that's how they get you. They were like, all right, That's we put out Pokemon you. Sleep. It ain't doing too hot. I'm kidding. It's probably doing amazing. But let, now now let's try a Mario Sleep and see if we can get a, a different audience here. I don't know. I feel like... You, like, how is Pikmin Bloom? Like how we said Pokemon Go, Pikmin Bloom. Pikmin Bloom is, is like a worse Pokemon Go. I mean, like... It's very relaxing. I was actually playing it the other day. I was playing it today. It's so much fun. But, I mean, it's just like... <sighs> How well is it really going to do sort of thing? I mean, most of the activity from the player base is going to be when they are not there to observe it. So I think it'll do well if it does actually exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably a bit better than Pokemon Sleep because I don't know. I feel like I feel like Mario going to sleep is a bit more relatable than (laughs) watching a Snorlax fall asleep in the middle of the road. (laughs) So... Mm-hmm. That's my take. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. Definitely. Mario Sleep coming to you soon. No, maybe not. It's a it's a patent. Sometimes patents don't always come to life. We'll have to see though if it does or if it doesn't. Honestly, I I could see that get talked about in the June direct. Do you think so? I I can see it because we know it's. I'm, I'm actually pretty glad that they announced the uh, you know good old this is Furukawa uh, <laughs> announced it earlier. That there is going to be indeed a direct in June mm-hmm. because now I don't have to think about it. I don't have to make a ten billionth uh, direct predictions video. Yeah, I can just chill and say, "Oh yeah, 
Not this week? Okay, maybe next week. Mm -hmm. Maybe next week. I only have to worry about four out of the 52 weeks of the year, (laughs) uh, which is which is great. Uh, But I think it'd be really funny because we've gotten a lot of Mario games uh, this year already. We've gotten Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Peach Showtime, Thousand Year Door. I guess, I mean, two of those only have Mario in the title. Yeah. But you you catch the drift. And Mm -hmm. then we obviously have Luigi's Mansion. I think it'd be really fun if the only Mario thing we get is 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 mario sleep uh and it just like releases i don't know september or something and then everyone forgets about it at that time yeah uh or we could have mario sleep in tandem with um a new mario party game i didn't even think about that or like honestly any mario because like my prediction is they're they're gonna drop a a mario sports game in this june direct mario what was the last mario sports game that was mario strikers right in 2022 yes june 10th oh wow it's almost the it's almost been exactly two years wow that's crazy that's crazy yeah so Mm -hmm. they'll they might bundle it up like like bundle it with something i mean not bundle it but like drop it around the same time yeah uh yeah mario sleep they've been throwing some oddballs at us recently so i i wouldn't be shocked if it was in the june direct but Let's see, this next piece of news, listen, people like this stuff, I like this stuff, but we can fly by it Mm -hmm. pretty quick. There are some new Nintendo Switch online icons. Oh, shoot, hold up. Oh, boy, grab your Switch right now. (laughs) So, hold up. If you have... I need to see if my goats are on here. If you have a Switch online membership, there are some brand new icons for you to unlock. There are three new, like, sets... One of them being Donkey Kong NES icons, the other one being Animal Crossing New Horizons June icons, and the four NPCs for that are Reese, Cyrus, Luna, and Gulliver, plus all of the villagers that have a birthday in June, and there are Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door icons. There have been for like the past two weeks, but there's a brand new wave of Thousand Year Door icons. Charlie, you have your switch out for those audio li- is, for the audio is, listeners. This is, this is great. What are you? This is great. I I just got um, I got my man Bobbery from Thousand Year Door. I didn't even check. I I, I wanted Coops. Mm-hmm. I was too late for Coops. They got to do a rerun. Man, Coops. It's all right. I missed Coops, Coops too. Ha- I think. Have you played? Have you played Thousand Year Door? So I've played a like little a bit. I haven't gotten to play many games at all this week, but I'm at. Uh, I think I just began Chapter Two. I'm not very far. Oh, I see. As someone who's beaten the game, yeah. it is very good. I was going to ask <laughs> where, where you were, but yeah, beating the game. How is it? Because yeah. I've heard it's a cult classic. Uh, it's very you know, great. I, I was playing um, my my Okay. My experience with Paper Mario, I've played about, I think, halfway through the original and then stopped for, I don't know, probably just got busy. Mm-hmm. Same thing goes for Super Paper Mario. <laughs> the only ones I've played in full are Sticker Star, um, <laughs> Kelly Splash, and the Origami King. Those are the only three games I've played in full. Sticker Star, it's Sticker Star, all right? Mm-hmm. Origami King was great, and I think I think Color Splash is probably my favorite out of um those three. Out of those three. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's 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 just it's so funny. It the yeah. game is so hilarious. I, I give props to the to the writers and localizers on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was playing uh, I was playing Thousand Year Door. I'm like, okay. I, I, I know what I'm getting into. It's stand- it's not as funny as Color Splash. Um, but I was, I was playing the game and, uh, and like the battle system was going and I was like, Oh God, I get it. (laughs) You know, like I get it. Mm -hmm. I get why people think it's, it's so, it's so good because they revamped the, the music and the first way to my heart in any game is having a banging soundtrack and that, and that checks the box and the, the gameplay is great. I really like the partners, although, you know, they kind of just talk about them for the chapter they're in then kind of disappear into the sidelines Mm -hmm. but it was such a good experience start to finish there's always something wacky going on uh something interesting to always keep you going forward unlike the sticker stuff (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and and like the final boss like i had to actually employ strategy uh in there but it was Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah. no, I'm not smiling. I'm not For smiling. For our audio listeners, I just but, took my headphones off because he was talking about the final boss. <laughs> right. I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, oh, good. obviously. I should probably make a video going over my, my thoughts and all that. But 
the later boss fights and or just kind of boss fights in general as well as just even some regular battles i had to employ like actual strategy and i had to you know actually think about battling for once and it's a different way of thinking than what you would do in let's say the origami king where basically you're just trying to solve a rubik's cube in 10 seconds yeah or in in color splash where you have to say okay what order do i put my attacks in in order to get the most most damage uh it's more so okay here's my current situation with my health and damage here's how much health they have how do i like most optimally take them out sort of similar to color splash but i think it really owns in because you just have so so many options with uh with the badges in that game so Mm -hmm. it's cool yeah i mean even you just saying that makes me excited to play the rest i've like there's some games where i can just skip the freaking dialogue like the spam b or whatever paper Mm -hmm. mario even like the uh the first one on the n64 and even this one i don't want to miss a piece of dialogue like it's it's great they they bring out the top tier writers if you haven't picked it up yet and you haven't played the original i would recommend we would recommend let's freaking go paper i'd say Mario. top top 10 switch games for sure really it's oh, up snap. there yeah it's up there uh i played super mario rpg right before i played uh thousand year door mm-hmm. i think i beat it like a day before the original came out Dang. Or, or the remake came out yeah and you can you can really tell like how much of that like original super mario rpg kind of dna is in the, the paper mario and the mario and luigi series but maybe that's the 3ds remake uh um, yeah oh yeah you can really tell how that has transferred over into into paper mario and and it really shines like they took all the stuff that you didn't like about super mario rpg and just axed it <laughs> made it better mm-hmm. and it's it's a swell time all these remakes are coming out they're all great and guess what we're gonna get many more in the uh last few years of switch it'll be great hopefully some in this june direct if you could predict one june direct i'm sorry one uh remake to come out in the in the june direct okay what are you predicting <sighs> gotta use my brain my brain powers so we've ba- it's basically been mario town mm-hmm. uh for the first i guess first half of this year yeah. the only thing that we've gotten is splatoon 3 side order mm-hmm. which is it's so good it is so good that it's probably one of my favorite dlcs they put out mm-hmm. But let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if there is Pikmin DLC. Mm. But with that said, I don't want there to be Pikmin 4 DLC hmm. because Pikmin 4 is is like the perfect game. If you if you can't tell by my appearance, I kind of like Pikmin. <laughs> and um I think a solid thing to do would be either um I could see them porting over the new soup, the rest of the new Super Mario Bros. games. All of them? Uh, that's just something I, yeah, why not? I just thought of that in like two seconds uh, with my two brain cells. <laughs> and another, I do think Mario Party. I think Mario Party is a lock. One final Mario Party, Superstars 2, or whatever. Just bring back the old boards at this point. I'll play them. I'll buy it. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything else. Maybe. And like maybe another Metroid Prime remastered, like Metroid Prime 2 remastered, something like that. Yep. I don't know how long they've had, you know, those in the tank for. Uh-huh. But I do know that I'm fairly certain it was like one year, Thousand Year Door remake was done for, and they just held on to it. Yes. Yeah. And they're probably doing that with tons of other games that we're about to see. So <gasps> Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, please. <laughs> I was just about to say, as much as a lot of people don't want it to be, I think this direct will be a Metroid heavy direct. It's gonna have the re uh, the remaster of my prediction was it'll have two, three, and the release date of Prime Four. Ooh, I I do think we're seeing Metroid Prime Four. Yes, I'm just gonna say it. Mm. I think if now is the time, now is the time. Uh, Nintendo also just announced, I think today, that Nintendo Switch Online members can play a demo of Hollow Knight. Oh, what? So guess what's happening at either Summer's Games Fest or this Nintendo Direct? When did they tweet that? I think, did I getting, I think, I, I think it was literally just today. Oh. Well, I'll see if I can find the tweet. I'm checking it now. But all I'm saying is that Silk Song is going to get a trailer or something. 
somewhere. Somewhere. We'll we'll freaking see. We'll see. But we do have one more piece of news to go over. And here's the thing, Charlie. You are in Canada, right? I'm not wrong, right? I am. I'm the best Mario Kart player in Canada as well. Like officially. Is that factual? Really? It is factual. Where can we look this up? Not, not, not that I don't believe you, but that's a that's a story for another time. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, so Nintendo has announced. I bring up that you're in Canada because you cannot participate. Ha 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 ha! Oh no! They've announced a. It's all right. At least they don't measure things in inches. <laughs> they have announced a play Nintendo tour for the U.S. Now you might be thinking, what the heck is this? Well, basically, and I'm gonna sound like a gambling ad real quick. If you live in Utah, Colorado, Texas, Iowa, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, South Carolina, Florida, and Minnesota, Nintendo is coming near you, not in my home state, they're coming near you to a mall near you with a big area in the mall, I would I would assume in the middle of the mall, where you can run around, play some Nintendo demos, get free Nintendo prizes, take pictures with Mario, whatever you want to do. So... As I said, they're coming to those states. I do not want to read them all again. That's kind of a lot of states. They will have Utah, Colorado, Texas, Iowa, Pennsylvania. Not <laughs> we sound like gambling ads. They like read all the states off, <laughs> like like who's eligible. So if you are going, there's a Luigi, sorry, a Luigi's Mansion 2 HD photo op. There's a Princess Peach Showtime, Mario Wonder, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet demo. There's also, which is my favorite part, however, also not my favorite, and I'll explain why. There's a Nintendo plushy claw machine. Now, let me tell you, that's going to be rigged to the gills. They have like a freaking ball orb in there, a Mario plush, all of the loved plushies. Charlie, how rigged is it going to be? I mean, I don't think it will be. Here's my thought, though. They've all, I, I don't yep. think it will be. Imagine every single person goes to your convention, right? Or your little, what is it, play Nintendo yes. tour, right? Everyone's trying this claw machine, which is supposedly free, mm-hmm. right? Is it? No one gets anything. I, I don't know if it's free or not. But I, I imagine know. everyone goes to that claw machine, go walks up. No one gets anything. That- they walk out of that mall ashamed. People are walking by is like, oh, no one has any plushies. But if people are walking through the mall, oh, they have a, they got good old C. Dot Junior over here. I wonder where they got that. That's just, it's free marketing. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Here's why I think it'll be rigged. Because Nintendo makes the most loved characters. You're going to get all the kids that wanted to go play the claw machine, which I, I don't think will be free. I think it'll be like a dollar or two to get you one play. And they're going to get your money because you want the plushies there for one or two dollars. Now, you can like change the claw grip. They, they shouldn't make it too rigged because like you said, they, they, they do want some kiddos walking around with a little ball board plush and maybe, maybe a Mario yep. for some free advertising and walking around the mall. But man, that's a quick little cash grab. I, I'm, I'm just trying to villainize or villainify Nintendo. So ignore me. No, that's fair. I mean, with the amount of Nintendo plushies I have, I could make my own claw machine. See, and then look, rig it, easy money, free money glitch. Exactly. There you go. I should be ripping off my viewers more. I knew it. I knew it. Make a virtual claw machine and rig it for your viewers. Oh, yeah. Infinite money. I'm just kidding, guys. We aren't like that. We are are good. We are good. No, we are. Nintendo. Okay, yeah, we are. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we are like that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I was also going to ask you here about the June Direct, but I feel like we kind of already deep dove into that a little bit. We can we can cover it a bit more. I mean, we know it's going to be the final Switch Direct. Mm-hmm. Do you think... Okay, here's... here. I've got, I got a question this time. Okay. Do you think we are going to see a game announced that is for the Switch 2, but not, like, call for it? They'll say, like, here's our final announcement of the day. And it's just going to be a trailer and it's not going to have anything at the end and nothing. And it's just going to be it's just going to be a game. My, so my answer is no. I think what we could see is a Nintendo game for Switch that that just ha- so happens to end up 
releasing on Switch 2, but it won't be like a Switch 2 exclusive, like a new 3D Mario trailer. I think I think that's Metroid Prime 4. Yes, like that could be shown. It's coming to Switch, but it might also just happen to be on Switch 2. I think that's a possibility, yeah. yeah. It's almost been seven years. I've been waiting seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that has to, because... God, we've been waiting seven years. <laughs> because this is their, probably anyway, their last Switch 1 only direct. And that's the yeah. only game that they've promised. I mean, you at least need to give an update on it because you, you can't start talking about Switch 2 when you haven't even like delivered on the only promise you have left to fulfill. You kind of need to say something about it. Yeah, I think what we could see is, all right, this title is going to be releasing on the Switch successor system, but it will also be releasing on the Nintendo Switch the same time, and then they roll the Metroid Prime 4 trailer. Yeah, please or check it out. Or at least say <laughs> Metroid Prime 4. We're not going to show it. It's going to be on Switch, but please look forward to the Switch 2 presentation, uh, whatever it's going to be. It's probably going to be in January again, I bet. Mm-hmm. They, Wait a minute. Yeah. That just gave me an idea. Oh, boy. You think Mercury Steam are remaking Super Metroid? What sparks that? Because I remember when uh, Nintendo approached them with the idea to make a remake, uh, which was Samus Returns. They said they originally wanted to do Metroid Fusion. Mm-hmm. So now that they've done Samus Returns, they've done, they've done Metroid 2 and 5. Right, the original. I don't know if Metroid Zero Mission is on a Nintendo Switch Online, but I don't know. I think Fusion might. I, I don't know. I it, think it is. They're probably on there. Yeah. Uh, but like, I feel like Super Metroid. Just like, it's just there. You know, mm-hmm. just I don't know. It's just game. Call it Gamer Instinct. That's what it is. My only thing is, I feel like if we get super metroid we're we have a little bit too much metroid going on i feel like you gotta remake the prime 2 and prime 3 and call it a day because then everyone i mean it's kind of like what they did with with pikmin you know they you have all pikmin on switch one two three four some some little joe out there can get the full experience on one system uh i would like a super metroid thing i never played about I, 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 it'd be cool you haven't played super Met- wow well here's the thing I haven't played Super Metroid? When I, like, all this time, when I could have played it, I don't know. I haven't played many old games. Like, give, give it a shot. It still holds up. I can guarantee you. I've heard that it's hard, though. Not really. Okay. I'd say Metroid Dread is way more difficult than Super Metroid. Okay. I'll have to see. I'll see. Super Metroid. I mean, yet again, this is the... I. I did beat like a game like Cuphead in two and a half hours, so I might be a bit biased. Mm. Ah, all good. I'll have to check it out. But definitely now for the title of this podcast, that topic that you clicked on the podcast for is now about to be put into discussion, my friends. Listen, so last night I was brainstorming topics to talk about on, on this podcast. And, you know, as much as I... Don't talk about it. It's kind of hard to run a Nintendo news-based show because, you know, there's not a whole lot of news. My topic, my main thing for this podcast was almost going to be that Google leak story for the Yoshi game. But I was like, nah, there's much bigger things to talk about right now. And we don't make podcast titles over Yoshi's Crafted World here. We don't do that. And so I was thinking (laughs) of, you know, Switch 2 is, is the big thing. And after Switch 2 is gone... We will no longer be able to speculate on Switch 2, obviously. So let's do it all now. And the topic that you all voted on, I put out I put out a poll. And sometimes I'll do this, guys. Comment down below if you see me do this. I, I put out a poll for like five minutes just to like kind of get a feel for what my audience likes. And then I delete it because I don't want everyone to see it. I just want to know what people like. And then that's it. Delete. You know, so I put out a poll, five minute poll. You all wanted to hear us talk about. Does the Nintendo Switch 2 need backwards compatibility? Don't answer. We're going to go ahead and talk about it now. Let's skadoodle. Does Nintendo Switch 2 need backwards compatibility? The topic that you all voted on and you all wanted to hear me and C.com discuss. So... 
I feel there's no better way to start this back and forth, very heated debate. I'm kidding. This back and forth. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're right. You're right. This back and forth debate. Then to ask you, Charlie, does Nintendo Switch 2 need backwards compatibility and what are your thoughts on it? I feel like this is, isn't a question of whether the Switch 2 needs it, whether more so we want it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because for me, uh, when, when we're talking backwards compatibility, you're probably thinking like upscaling the games, running them at higher frame rates, right? And, you know, I'd kill to run Xenoblade 3 at a stable frame rate, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, uh, HD resolution. But I don't think Nintendo is actually going to have it. Um, we heard over a, maybe over a year or close to a year ago about Nintendo showing off a 4K 60 FPS version of Breath of the Wild at Gamescom. Yes. And I still think that's most likely going to be, that's probably going to be a, a launch title or at least some launch year title. I think we're going to get, might get the full on Wind Waker remake I was talking about earlier or Ocarina of Time remake. Mm-hmm. And then this uh, like deluxe version of Breath of the Wild because it has been seven years, mm-hmm. which is bonkers. But I think Nintendo is going to be very cheeky about it because I still have my Switch. I can still play my Switch games on the Switch. I don't think Nintendo wants to necessarily devalue the Switch because I still think they're gunning for it to be the best selling console of all time. I think that you can bring your Nintendo Switch 2 games over from the original Switch to the Switch 2 for like a price of like $5 per game and everyone's going to hate it, but I'm going to do it anyways. I love that you brought up the whole like $5 per game thing. Here's the only thing. I mean, you said it. People are going to hate it, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. But my thought is, if you put backwards compatibility on Switch 2 for free, I would say for free. I would hope it's free. If you put that on Switch 2, I feel like that's instantly a reason for anybody who has a switch to buy a switch too if the games run better like if the whole breath of the wild thing at 4k 60 fps whatever it is if that like if that was free if you could just re-download the game and it runs better i could see that being a major selling point for switch 2 agree Hmm. or better yet we were talking about a current pack in for the Switch 2. How crazy would it be if it's packed in with Breath of the Wild? This deluxe version <laughs> with all the with all the things and DLC. That would be absolutely crazy. I don't think Nintendo would do it, mm. but people so c- closely associate the Nintendo Switch launch with the launch of Breath of the Wild because that was basically the only game it had at launch. Sorry, sorry. Yep. One, two, Switch. <laughs> One, two, Switch. Can't forget about my goat. Can't forget about my goat. Uh, but... I do think that having it um, be better at running uh, standard Switch games right off the bat would be a a huge draw, like especially for me. I'm going to get it anyway. This is my job. But Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a huge draw for for anyone, really, because let's say I had to download Fortnite on my Switch the other day for a video. And oh, boy, Mm -hmm. that game, that game runs. That game bit. runs. I, I'm, I try to catch it. It takes me only about two seconds because it does not run fast. But it, it definitely <laughs> can run a bunch of stuff. And it has, it has the third-party support. right? The Switch has the third-party support just because obviously it's the Switch. But I feel like they can really capitalize on that by just making it, you know, I don't need a super powerful console because I want to keep, obviously, the prices down if I'm Nintendo. I don't want it to be, it's like $800 for a PS5 here. Jeez, it's crazy. That's I could get I could get two of these for the price of one one PS5. Yeah, uh, it's, I think it's actually more. I don't I don't know. It's crazy Dang. out there. But if the Nintendo Switch Two has backwards compatibility, I think it would be a net plus. But what I also think, what is uh, I also think what's going to happen is that obviously the games I think will take your approach of just running better right off the box. Uh, on the on the on the switch too mm-hmm. but i still think that it'll be you know for example xenoblade 3 runs at a at a target of 30 frames per second yeah. i love using xenoblade 3 as a reference <laughs> if good. you couldn't tell um uh, 
and it runs at i don't know what some resolution or something Mm -hmm. and what i think when it launches on switch 2 they'll say okay we're just going to keep pushing that target 30 frames we're just going to keep pushing the target 30 frames that's it stick to what the original code was and then stick to keeping the highest resolution it was coded to do and then maybe you know xenoblade 3 upgrade for switch 2 like five bucks on the eShop. There you go. And then it just unlocks all those features. Maybe with some other, I know it probably takes some like developer, uh, developer side work to make these games run better. Uh, just because they're so well optimized for the base switch, they kind of need to, I guess, unoptimize it to have it work on the switch too. So I can see them putting out five bucks for that, but I can see the games running just overall better on the switch too but for people who want let's say 4k 60 metroid dread for example because it runs at at like 900p resolution and i think 60 frames yeah Mm -hmm. on the base switch if they want that upgrade they can go get it if they want yes no no no. i agree (sighs) i mean my biggest thing I just want my freaking my Animal Crossing is your Xenoblade Chronicles. I want my Animal Crossing Amen. at sixty frames per second on at Switch. Sixty too. frames, nice crisp. Maybe it's like ray tracing update for Animal Crossing. Imagine anything would be great. <laughs> what I hope they don't do is kind of like how you were saying. I don't mean to like be disagreeing. I I just like no. This is the point. You you should be disagreeing. In fact, we should be getting in the ring right now. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> shorts, YouTube shorts boxing match. No, I like. Oh, God. I I'd hope, get folded so fast. <laughs> I hope. That's that, why That's why I have this. That's why I have the sword. <laughs> I hope that they don't like re-release things as like Breath of the Wild 4K. Buy it. You know, like, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope it's just like a pop it in the Switch 2 and it runs better. You know, I hope it's like that. Mm-hmm. Not to, like not like a whole new release type thing. Yeah. I think that's definitely the right play. Mm-hmm. I can see um, them doing uh, kind of packaging it in a way. So like you have, let's use uh, Tears of the Kingdom for an example this time, mm-hmm. right? Tears of the Kingdom, you can buy it on your regular Switch, like 70 bucks. I could see them even marking it down for 60 once I'll get to it. Yep. And then Tears of the Kingdom for the Switch 2 release. And you're like, oh, what's the, what's the difference? Maybe there's going to be a little blurb like on on the bottom right of the box saying, hey, this one runs better than on the basic Switch because it's running on the Switch too. And I could see that one being $70 instead of the the Breath of the Wild. I mean, ah, Tears of the Kingdom on the Switch 1 being, you know, the the standard 60. And I could see that the route go them going that route on it. But I can also see it having that yet again eShop upgrade for like five, 10 bucks if you already have the pre-existing game. I think that's the the best way to go about it, especially if you're making like super deluxe versions of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing that I think is going to happen that has no relation whatsoever to what we are talking to. I think the next Mario Kart game is going to be free. Whoa, that's a whole new tangent. Um, yeah. I'm going to say one last thing on the backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the whole Mario Kart thing. I'll just put a new level segment thing. Um, if they were to charge for backwards compatibility two things one do you think it would just be like a one-time fee or or like even like a subscription if so sorry if not how much do you think they'll charge per game five Hmm, i think it'll be for each i think it'll be a smash bros dlc fighters worth of money for for each like game upgrade i think it's gonna be like a 5.99 us for each like a tenth of the original price Mm -hmm. of the game uh if they're like a full price 60 dollar game yeah i I think that's the the best way to go about it i mean people are gonna hate it i'm gonna like it because i get to play xenoblade 3 at 60 (laughs) it's just hard though because like they've never ever charged for backwards compatibility but at the same time like They've never really improved. They they've never really had backwards compatible games like run very noticeably better on the new mm-hmm. hardware. Like Wii games don't look incredible on the Wii U or like you know more. Yeah, they are, than they, they are they are upscaled 
to yeah, 720p a little bit. on on the Wii, but still that doesn't doesn't really do increasing much. the resolution doesn't do too much. And I can actually see them doing that with the Switch too, mm-hmm. but like to increase like draw distance of grass, yeah, or level of detail, just just things like that. The things you don't really notice in a game that just make all the difference in your immersion of it, mm-hmm. like a uh, level of detail. For those who don't know, basically. Uh, we see C. Dot Junior back there. C. Dot Junior is is far away from the camera, and so the uh, the game isn't going to use a really expensive three D model to to render good old C. Dot Junior because you can't see all the details very well. Mm-hmm. But if I were to bring you know C. Dot Junior all the way closer to the camera, then they're going to switch to the expensive three D model because you're seeing all the all the the nice details. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what? level of detail is is basically a, a system where the further you get away from something the the lower quality it gets basically and there's another thing called draw distance where depending on how far away you are from an object it might straight up disappear mm-hmm. and i can see with these upgrades especially on tears of the kingdom and breath of the wild uh, i don't know if you guys are flying somewhere and just see enemies pop in on the ground that <laughs> yeah. is something called that's that's the draw distance for those enemies being too short and not being able to to have everything in at uh, one time, so I can see upgrades like that being really substantial for for a deluxe or 4K or 60 Switch Two version. Mm-hmm. I like your knowledge because I don't know about like I'm not sure about any of that kind of stuff. I didn't like yeah. get any of that until you like explained it, like the enemies appearing out of nowhere, dude. That's mm-hmm. like that's what I would want fix. I, like even with my beloved Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you have, and I shouldn't even say too much, but if you have, quote unquote, too much furniture on your island, your island's lagging, your frames drop like crazy. I just Mm -hmm. want to come out of my house on Animal Crossing and for all my furniture to be there. Like, it just pops up slowly. I hate it. You don't want that to take like 10 seconds to move to room to room, you know? Yes. Or have you even played like the Animal Crossing New Horizons multiplayer Yes. Oh my I, god, I, I, please bit. fix that on Switch 2. It's atrocious. Just with all the all the character models, because since all the character models are so close to the camera, they're always in that high quality mode. Mm-hmm. Right? So you can't really avoid that with level of detail. The only way to do that was either A, make the models look worse so they don't take as much uh, resources from the console, or mm-hmm. B, get a better console. Yeah. I I agree. I'll pose one last question to you. And I was going to go back to the Mario Kart free thing. Do you want to talk about that on our next you know episode? Because I feel like we'll talk about how I think the next Mario Kart game on the Switch 2 will be absolutely free. And it's going to be called Mario Kart X on the next episode. I'm going to bring you on soon. Once like Switch 2 is like rolling out, they like drop a uh, announcement yeah. trailer. We have to bring you on because we have to talk about that because that's that's going to be big. We, we got to. We have to. I, I think. In the Switch 2 reveal trailer, there's going to be Mario Kart shown. Just well, like with the Switch 1. We'll have to bring you on after that. But I pose one last question to you, the same one that I asked you in the beginning. Yes or no, the Switch 2 need backwards compatibility? Yeah. I think so as well. Because if it doesn't have it, like that's kind of a letdown for anybody who's like hoping for mm-hmm. I mean, obviously. But like for anybody who's just... You know, like when you buy a Wii U, you're like, oh, do my Wii games work or do I have to abandon that and now have two home consoles? You know, like it's just kind of a letdown for everybody. So I agree with you. I think it has to have it. It's a selling point, too, even if they don't run better, like even even if the games are just normal, you know, you don't want to have two switches on your entertainment center. (laughs) Like It just makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So there was also a developer interview with, I think, Furukawa, uh, mm -hmm. obviously president of Nintendo of Japan or just Nintendo in general, talking about, mm-hmm. hey, uh, this Nintendo account system, how is that going to work? Is it going to be you know, the same Nintendo account system moving forward? And it was yes. The answer yes. was yes. So now I don't have to make two Nintendo IDs for my 3DS and Wii U, right? Mm-hmm. Or we're just going to keep the Switch one moving forward. And that gives me a bit more hope that I'll be able to, to re-download you know, Xenoblade 3 and my, my new Switch 2. Uh, mm. Please, please, please. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yep. No, I agree. They've been talking a lot about Nintendo account. I think backwards compatibility is bound to happen. But my friends, that was the title of the podcast, but we are far from over. It is time to get to your favorite segment, the people's segment, the greatest segment in the show. 
some would say, the Answering Your Questions segment, where me and C. Dot and C. Dot Jr. Who is C. Dot Jr., yep. by the way, for the, for the uh, audio listeners? Uh, C. Dot Jr. is my uh, plushie of a bull borb from hit series Pikmin. From hit series Pikmin. That is C. Dot Jr. We're all going to answer your questions you have asked us. Let's go ahead. Let's do that. Alrighty, my friends, it is time to answer your questions you have asked me in C.com. Now, a lot of you ask, Max, how do I ask a question? Well, the easiest way is to subscribe to my main channel, which is linked down below, my main YouTube channel in the description, and check back every single Wednesday. I make a community post saying, hey, hope you're doing well. Ask me a question down below, and you do it. I said that we had a guest. I said that we had a returning guest. We have questions, and if you become a channel member, you can get a guaranteed question, which we have some of those today, linked down below as well. Let's begin with our first question. I'm going to toss them over to you, then I'll answer them myself. First question. Right. This one I put first because I feel like we're, we're going to have a banger discussion here. Arthur, All right, I see it. <laughs> Arthur44572 <laughs> asks, what is your favorite Nintendo console, and why is it the Wii U? <laughs> okay. So, big Wii U fan. Yes. All right. Just let me get that off the uh, off the bat. Same. I do think my favorite console is now the Switch. Oh. Just from like, I I think it's the best console. Mm -hmm. Maybe not my favorite, but it's definitely the best console. Mm -hmm. I still think obviously Wii U takes my favorite because a you can play Mario Galaxy two on it. Yeah. And um <laughs> Nintendo Land. So like that's I just need those two games. You know, like I'm stuck on a desert island. I need two games. I'm picking those two any day of the week. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why people really like the Wii U <laughs> is, uh, first of all, we're getting to that point where the, the thing's getting nostalgic, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, God, it's old. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> feeling the gray hairs. I'm feeling the gray hairs. Um, it was Nintendo's first HD console, and it did a good job at being an HD console. But when you think about it, I think a lot of this, you know, newfound like Wii U kind of, um, enjoyment or respect mainly comes from the fact that we have the switch now mm -hmm. it, it's like how once mario odyssey released everyone was like wait a minute 3d world is really good you know because mm -hmm. i remember th people did not like 3d world on release they said it was a fantastic game but like oh i i want a real a real 3d mario and then odyssey came around and then they could appreciate 3d world for what it was and i think we're having a very similar situation with the wii u here because i really like it I'm playing through Xenoblade X. Mm -hmm. It's great, right? Same. Me playing Xenoblade is no big surprise. Uh, but I still think that the Wii U gamepad is probably the most comfortable controller I've ever held. Agreed. Um, it's, it's great. I think the developers are just straight up held a block of clay and kind of like <laughs> squeezed it. And, and that's, <laughs> I, I remember hearing that somewhere. They just squeezed it and I'm like, okay, yep, that's the shape we're going to make the controller. And <laughs> I, I guess it worked. It worked really well. Uh, but I think it's mainly. I think it's mainly due to nostalgia because I do think my favorite console is still the Switch, mostly because most of the Wii U games are on the Switch. Yep. But I, I think it's just it's just getting that. I'm not saying it's a phase, Mom, but it might be a bit of a phase, Mom. That I do think that people saying it's their favorite is maybe overcompensating for the fact that they just want to say I really enjoy the Wii U. I think it was great, regardless of you know how it performed financially. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what I got to say about that. I think the Wii U is great. I think uh, it would be my favorite if the Switch didn't exist. I can confirm pretty much all that you said. I, <laughs> the Wii U is my favorite console. I'll just put it out there. I, I think people know that. But yes, it's nostalgia. And I thought you were going to go here. I can really appreciate the Wii U because the Switch has no charm, no, no music, no nothing. That is true. And but I've, also, yep. the Switch doesn't take 12 years to open up the settings menu. Very true, but at the same time, I can listen to the boom, 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 like the loading sound or whatever. <laughs> like, the loading sound, it's yeah. It's charming, man. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. The games, my probably big thing was like, you know, when I was growing up, the only other console that I had was an Xbox. And like, you, you just have a little controller in your hand and, and you hit a b x y and you know all the cool stuff with the wii u you had the game pad have you ever played game and wario 
Uh, I've played. I've played a bit. I've played a bit, but that game's great. Have you ever played Affordable Space Adventures? You told me about this last time, and I told you about it last no, time. Did you do your homework? But guess what? Yes, I did. Kind of. Sorry. Ah. Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I have the game. I haven't played it yet. So kind of. You're getting there. I give you until next episode. Okay. Uh, by the way, is it is it single player? Like, can I play one player? It is single player. Okay. But the multiplayer experience in that game mm -hmm. is so funny, mm -hmm. fun, um, cautious. Oh boy. Um, instigating and dangerous. Friendship breaking. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, it. Yeah, it's going there. Mm -hmm. Wii U favorite console, but yeah, I mean Switch. I would say is better overall. I I mean I I wouldn't say that mm -hmm. myself. I think that the Wii U is king, but I can see how one how how one would think that. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Next question. But remember, yep. Remember ahead. before we go to the next question, no one goes on the internet to be proven wrong. Factual, factual, wise words from C.com. Our next question comes from Cool Dodo. Who asks, which console do you think was, I, I'm going to change it to is the best for modding. Which console is the best for modding? I could have modded this console a solid five times within the duration of this podcast. It's the 3DS. I think you could, you, you could have gone like 10, to be honest. I'm going off the 15 minute mark. Yeah, what am I saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Five times. Yeah, I, I think the, the 3DS, just because you got those custom themes. Mm -hmm. Please, when I open it up, it better be better, Call Saul. Please, he, when he I open it up. He has his 3DS out. Control. Come on. It's going to take, like, years to boot up. It's, it's going to take years up. to boot up. But what, what do you think is the, is the best one? So my opinion, probably the Wii U, because you can play almost every single Nintendo game on it, apart from 3DS, Switch, and some select games from the previous uh, generations. And custom themes, like you're saying. Indeed. Um, funny story. Uh, one, of my, one of my friends, uh, his, name, his name's Johnny Razor on YouTube. Oh, uh, yes. He went to go went to go get a a wii u he like bought it off of a, a friend from his college right mm, yep. and um what he didn't know was that it was already modded when he got it oh wow <laughs> he's like i want to get i want to get a custom theme on this thing and then just wouldn't you know it i see it, I see it already it. came pre-installed because he, he was it, he was gonna ask me he's like hey hey um can you, can you i want custom themes on my on my wii u can you obviously help me set it up I'm like yeah i i know a thing or two i haven't done it a lot in the past but mm -hmm. like even if you want to record it i can get you the the custom firmware that swaps the wii u in the gamepad screen which is great for, oh, yeah. for any streaming right so i i, I do it and I'm like okay we're all ready and then we boot up the wii u and it already has all that <laughs> that's how that's how easy it is i thought that you that you were gonna say he bricked his wii u that's where i thought it was going no okay that would have been really funny though okay okay i would have laughed i would have laughed yeah wait so you were turning on your 3ds is it on now <laughs> yeah <laughs> hold on let me just go to an go to a <laughs> oh boy he's going but yeah i mean i i think we use best so many games you can have okay so he has a custom theme <laughs> who who is this this is saul goodman from hit show better call saul there you go custom themes are king Honestly, on the they Wii are. U, they really are. On the Wii U, custom themes are not the greatest. I mean, uh, sorry, they're cool, but it's like a blue theme, orange theme, great theme. 3DS, you can put whatever you want. It's great. Yeah. It's like, so, hey, hey, kids, you like gradients? You know? <laughs> yeah. So I would say Wii U, he says 3DS. We agree to disagree, but hey, the good thing is they're both from that same console generation. So we, we're, we're exactly. somewhere close. That's great. We're, we're getting there, yeah. Doggo, who is a channel member, asks, what are the best third-party controllers for the Switch or N64? I would assume Doggo's got a Switch and an N64. I wouldn't mm. know on the N64 side. Uh, there is... Oh, shoot. There's one controller. Hold on. I got... I. It's going to be on my brain. All I know is that Retro Fighters 
controller. Yeah, yeah, that that's the one. I was looking at the the Retro Fighters. Okay, so Retro Fighters Friends sixty four, and then yeah, or the I think it's Retro Tribute sixty four <laughs> wired controller for Nintendo sixty four on eBay dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading out the lessons now. Yeah, and then for Switch, uh, what are your, what what's your third party go to? If you uh, I'm gonna sound like such an ad, but oh, you boy. know what? Screw it. This is the 8-bit Do Ultimate controller. I'm the same. This, you're the same. I was gonna this say is that by far the the best controller you can get for for your cash. First things first. These these joysticks are are what uh, use something called Hall Effect joysticks, which means that instead of having any physical parts on the inside. That can, you know, scrape sensors causing stick drift. It uses, uh, you know, magnets to find, you know, what position you're doing, which is great. And so these these guys don't get stick drift. Secondly, they got, no, there's dust. I mean, I haven't used it in a while, but it's a good one. It's a good one, I trust. Uh, overall, just just great feeling control. It has back paddles on here. Mm -hmm. It also has, let me see if I can get this on camera. Yeah, it has this little docking station. Yes. Right here. Mm -hmm. right which is so great yeah i i was like okay why do i need a docking station i could just pick up the controller and turn it on mm -hmm. but now i don't even have to turn on the controller i put it on the dock it charges and then when i want i just take it off and then it instantly turns on it's so neat man it's so neat and i think my favorite part is that it actually has motion controls yes and they're good motion controls too like mm -hmm. i don't have to adjust too much yeah uh one one thing i will say though that i don't i didn't like about this controller was the the buttons the ABXY buttons? You see, I painted over them mm -hmm. because they just I don't know. I just didn't like how they looked, but yeah, that's my only weird. that's my only critique. Yeah, I have so I have the blue one. It's blue and white, mm -hmm. um, and I have like these like little thumb grip caps. Like, dude, yeah, it's thumb grip. such a nice controller, man. This is not mm -hmm. an ad, by the way. We just both like this it a lot. Not. Honestly, I mean. If that controller didn't exist, I'd say this one right here is my favorite. Oh my god, what is um, that? <laughs> this is... You haven't heard? This is the best new controller on the market. Wait, hold what on. Do you mean? Is that for Switch? Or is that like a joke? <laughs> I mean, if I opened it up and did some wiring, I bet it could work okay, I was going to say, because that's my next YouTube <laughs> yeah. short, if, if that was a real yeah, thing. Yeah, this is, this is the Fisher Prey. It actually, if you put in the Konami code, uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, it gives you a special like sound. That's cool. And for our, sorry, for our audio listeners, it's a uh, Fisher Price controller, like a, a Fisher, baby. Fisher Price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's dope, though. Yeah, it's a, uh, there it is. Baby controller. Look at that. <laughs> Has a little smiley face on it. That's that's dope. Awesome. Now, our God, the Walmart, the Walmart employee was looking at me so weird when I was checking that out. <laughs> That's an odd transaction. Our next question comes from Expect the Ghost channel member. Asking, do you think there will ever be a new Super Mario Bros. All Stars? I was just talking about this, wasn't I? Oh snap! I I, I said I said something earlier on. It's like they're going to bring the new Super Mario Bros. games over. Yes, I can see that. New Super Mario Bros. One, two, and uh, and we bring them over for uh, what what is it? Um, is it going to be Mario's 40th anniversary next year? No, we're still a ways <laughs> off from that. Yeah, a little little further. But you know. I, I think I think it can happen. I think it can happen. I think it'll for sure happen, just not soon. Like not even like honestly, the earliest I think that we that, that we'd ever see that is like end of Switch Two life. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the thing is with with that, there's there's you can only make those games so visually impressive, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, there's only so much you can do if you make them all look like Mario Bros. Wonder. Mm -hmm. which i doubt they do yeah but that would be that would be phenomenal be awesome uh or maybe heck maybe we'll even see it at the june direct and it'll be it'll be like a november release and then or no october release and then november is the mario party uh christmas title i would like that you you think it'd be that it'd be like this soon though it'd be like it'd be like this year because like i mean if they don't if they don't redo all the graphics a lot of folks getting into Mario now after the movie and Wonder came out. So, but here's the only thing: like we we already have Mario Bros. Deluxe on the Switch, so it's like why put it out again, sort of thing. Yeah, that that is true, but that's why you don't bring over. The, that's why you don't include the Wii U in the package. Yeah, I mean, you could just do DS, Wii, and 3DS Mario Bros. Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind either way. 
But I mean, I mean, honestly, the the three game package, the DS one, the Wii one, and the 3DS, that makes some sense. Like they did three D all three D All Stars. That's a three game pack. You bring over all the DLC from New Super Mario Bros. Two, whatever they did yeah. for for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is just. This is just me coping because I want Mario <laughs> Galaxy 2 so bad. I just I I want it so bad. What's what's your favorite new Super Mario Bros. I, game? I think my favorite had to be Wii. Mm. Uh I just think that had the best levels. Mine is two. Mm. For the 3DS. New Super Mario. How does it Mario feel not being two? able to do a mid-air spin? <laughs> I don't know. I just all I can remember is getting out of the soggy pool one summer in 2014. And hopping and just, on, and just going through it. <laughs> yeah, not not at the pool, but like I would get home, wouldn't even shower. Mm-hmm. I would just hop on. Like it was great on my black uh, 3ds XL. Uh, I had yeah. a red one, but I I I sold it back. I mean, not sorry, not back. I lost it. Then I buy, you know, I lost it. Then I bought a new one. Then I found the red mm-hmm. one, and I was I was like, all right, just sell it. Um, yeah, this isn't a, a a 3ds, but I still got my classic classic, my classic red DS. DS light. Heck yeah. Awesome. But yeah, I mean, freaking Super Mario Bros. All-Stars, we would welcome it. Yeah. We would like it. Just give me Galaxy 2. That's all I want. You know what? I bet that that rumored 3DS remake, or not, I guess rumored Mm -hmm. how credible that is, it might be 3D Land. I would like that. However, it's a bit similar to 3D World, though. That's why you put it on Switch in the last year of its life. Tough sell, though, huh? I I don't think they would expect it to. Yeah, I mean, any Mario would sell well. Either way, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, we're getting too off track. Let, let's keep going. Peaches Grotto asks, if you could interview any Nintendo-related person, be it game dev, YouTuber, someone from Illumination, who would it be, and what would you ask them? I would find the person who made the minions. From Illumination? But did they yeah. work on the Mario movie? Probably. You would find them. I would just ask them why. Why minions or why Mario? I would just ask them why. Why? Just why. But then what if they follow up and say, why what? You know. What if what if they say, I don't know? (laughs) You know. Okay. (laughs) You will ask them about <laughs> no minions no but no. but uh decide me uh beside besides the point of me uh you know contemplating why the minions exist yes uh i would probably i'd want to talk with uh i believe he was the director of skyward sword breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom uh hitamaru fujibayashi yes uh i, I do i want to have a sit down and, and chat with him about video games you know just just how he makes all those things work mm-hmm. i feel like most folks would say like miyamoto or, or something but mm-hmm. I want to know what made Breath of the Wild tick. Yeah. No, no. He's definitely a cool guy. Um, Dude, who would I? Can I say past or present? Yeah. Do you know who I'm referring Actually, wait, to? Reggie. I change it. Okay. Reggie fils Former yeah. Nintendo president. Do you know who I would pick? Like, just by me saying past or present, do you know who I'd pick? I don't know, because there's a lot of folks who don't work at the company anymore. Like past uh, as in like Gamatsu. Past as oh, in like. Would you talk to Iwata? Yes. Yes. I would talk to Iwata. Oh, what a what a good good man. What a like every good single man. time. I think there was an interview from like 2004 where where that my my great glorious king predicted basically what's happening in the games industry right now. What did he say again? I forget. I feel like I might have heard he it. He said though. like as as games get more graphically detailed these developers are going to start spending so much money in the pursuit of realism only to get diminishing returns and have to like lay off a bunch of people. Basically, that was the gist of it. And uh-huh. I was like, wow, you're right. Yeah, there was one thing that I read recently where he was like, I think this was real. Uh, not that it wouldn't be real, but like, I just like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to like misquote mm-hmm. him or anything. He said something like, when you release a game, you don't want, and this isn't like very inspiring. He said, when you, re- when you put out a game, you don't want like an all positive reception to the game you want like a mixed yeah. reception because that's like what sells you know and i i don't know i just kind of like that approach i just i don't know some he, he was i mean very i wouldn't wise. say i would say overall positive but definitely to have some criticism on the game yes to definitely build that discussion online because 
if you release a unanimously good game, mm-hmm. it's not really going to be talked about as much. Exactly. Think of Kirby and the Forgotten Land. That game has zero patches. Mm-hmm. None. Right? Just came out day one. Perfect. Didn't need any updates. No nothing. And people talked about it for like a week. Like, yeah, this game's really good. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I, I think the best example of that is Switch Sports. Very oh, yeah, fun. For sure but very mixed response. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people love it. Like, I think that was the perfect example of you want a game to be liked, but also have a mixed Mm -hmm. reaction. Yeah. Yeah. So that's who we had talked to. We're talking to people from Illumination about Minions. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Our next question comes from Not Retro Bread, who asks, simple question, two words, best Pikmin. You You go first. I'm judging you right now. Just know that. Yep. So I only have one Pikmin plush. And that was, so when I was younger, I had a white Pikmin plush. And that was before I ever even played Pikmin because when I was younger, I didn't know what a Pikmin really was. I had the plush because Mm -hmm. I think my brother liked Pikmin and I I was like, I want one of those. And he chose the white one for me, I think. I lost it either way. Now, the only Pikmin plush that I have, and I actually picked it up last November at Nintendo New York. And here's my answer. Purple Pikmin. Purple. Purple Pikmin? Yes. He, he's, he's been back there this entire time. He's over I got, there I got me. one of these. There we go. <laughs> Man. They're, always keep a Pikmin 12 meters from you at all times. Always. Uh, my favorite is, uh, it's not white Pikmin, as you, as you might think. Uh, it's yellow. Yellow the Pikmin. Pin. Yeah. Key Pikmin. I don't know. It's just yellow. Yellow's the, the, best, the best Pikmin color. They're, they're very useful. In the game. Don't they like... And I just like the color yellow. Aren't they very, like, lightweight? Like, like you can throw them far? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm in, just in making Pic- sure. In Pikmin 1, in Pikmin 1, they were powerhouses. Goodness gracious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, they were the only one who could carry the bomb rocks. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, f- I forgot about that. I like the purple mm-hmm. one because he's just strong. He's Yeah, he's, he's cool. great. I just like him. Mm-hmm. And, he's, and he's, you know, useful as well. I, I like the purple. Yeah. Perfect. Comment down below. Which one is your favorite, my friends? We are judging you. I'll look. We're going to look. look. We're going to respond to look. every comment. No, I'm kidding. No, well, no, no. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> uh, Stefan asks, which console do you think had the best advertising? Now, this comment had six likes. Ooh. A lot of people want to know. <laughs> Let's see. Honestly? Mm-hmm. You, you go first. Okay. I, need, I need time to ponder. My my Come answer on. would be the Switch. I mean, like it's like look at it. Like look at the advertising. It obviously worked. I mean, I don't know because you can't say the Wii U. There's not much footage online of like anything really before that. Ah, uh, well, I mean, like mm-hmm. you know, like how many Wii ads can you find on can you find online as opposed to like Switch ads? Like the advertising is everywhere for everybody. You know, I, I feel like they're really doing a good job with that. Yeah. What's your answer? <laughs> yeah, I think. Let's see. Let's see. Let's okay. See. Okay. Mine. The Super Nintendo. Mm, I'm not too familiar with advertising for that. Yeah. The only reason I say I say that is because of the Sega versus Nintendo console war that happened at mm. that time. Did they go ham? What happened? Like, not not the fact that they went ham. It was just that. Because obviously, what was it? It was Sega does what Nintendo don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Right? There's that whole slogan. Yeah. And then I remember like they, they were keep going. And then basically, uh, what's the word? Uh, Nintendo put out the Super Nintendo mm. and then said, yeah, here it is. There it like, is. You see Donkey Kong Country? You see Aquatic Ambience? Yeah. And that was it. That was like, it. It wasn't more. I, I guess it was more like a, a product of the times the console was made in. Mm-hmm. But just the fact that, like, the console wars are still a thing. That was, like, the first main console war I can think of, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that it has that ripple effect to this day. Yeah. People, like, the the Xbox and, and like, Sony kind of console war, especially over, uh, like, Activision Blizzard mm-hmm. that was happening when Microsoft was trying to, like, uh, acquire that studio yes. so they could eventually, obviously, lay them all off, is <laughs> absolutely... <laughs> What they're they were that was way more intense than any Sega versus Nintendo. Like they were going for each other's throats. Yeah. Like they were going for each other's throats back back in the 90s. Mm. But like now, like corporate sabotage, like, oh my God. It's you can see that just it's like the one little 
the the canon event of the video games industry Mm -hmm. it just escalates to this huge huge issue so i i'd have to say if the super nintendo did not be the super nintendo and so many people getting obviously the super nintendo i don't don't think it would have uh would have been as good in the in the time that it was if it wasn't for that no, yeah, that's a that's a great answer. I mean, dude, <laughs> mine mine was basic compared to that. Got the whole war. Uh, I'm going pulling on out there. the cork board. I'm like, so here. <laughs> you got the- all the strings on it or whatever, dude. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Then we have two lighthearted questions to end off the show. Cam Den channel member. These are both channel members asking the all great right. questions. Asking the real questions. Cam Den asks, "Do you like onion rings?" <laughs> Uh, I'm not a fan, personally. Okay. I'll have them on an off day, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's about it. For me, never had one in my life, never planned to. It's crazy. They're in Splatoon. They are. Oh, you mean? You oh, yeah, get... oh, yeah, like the snack. <laughs> They're Nintendo related. We have to have them. Uh, well, <laughs> also <laughs> Nintendo related. I was going to say mushrooms, but I don't, I don't eat those either. <laughs> um. <laughs> What is a Nintendo food? There's, there's, no, there's not. I was going to say that, that there's bananas in, in Animal Crossing, but there's not, there's not in New Horizons. There no. are in New Leaf, I think, right? Yeah. So I, I was, there, Donkey Kong has bananas. That's, I'm so that stupid. That's true. Donkey Kong right? bananas uh-huh. I eat. There you go. You know, uh, calamari, Splatoon. I don't eat know? that. There's salmon, salmon run. I eat salmon. This is true. <laughs> it's true. Just anything in the Kirby series. Oh, right. Yeah. Like uh, strawberries and all the cake mm-hmm. and stuff. It's great. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It's great. But no, we don't like onion rings. <laughs> so <laughs> No, we don't. And then also, last question. I like trains. This comment has five likes. Everyone wants to know. And uh-huh. you just did it for our video listeners. When was the last time that you drank water? He is drinking water right now, audio listeners. So yeah, your answer is probably now. like a few years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And then my answer is actually I have not drank water the entire podcast. Um I actually crazy. Dude, it's so hard for me. I should have had my water bottle here because you got to get a water bottle. I have one. It's it's over there. It's a gallons. It's a 1 1 gallon bottle. Um mm-hmm. I I don't ever drink during the podcast so because normally I do this podcast solo. There's no there's no room for drinking in between, you know, talking, you're you know. Just, you're just going. There yeah, there's there's no room for that. So this episode I I could have had it and probably should have had it. Like, like you're taking sips now, which is perfect. Like that's that's how I'm I taking, should be doing it. I'm taking sips. That, I'm enjoying this mm-hmm. the hydrogen and oxygen right now. That's how I should be doing it. I'm so used to just no water the entire show. I will sometimes in between segments, but I didn't even do it today. Like I'm just going. But you know, uh, last time that I drank water, it's 7:40 p.m. Probably like yeah, like an hour and 40 minutes ago when we started 6 mm-hmm. p.m. sharp. <laughs> Bold to assume that I was drinking water, though. Oh yeah, what is it? I I I did assume it's water, isn't it? Anyways, I think that's a good time to wrap up the podcast. That's a great time <laughs> to wrap up the podcast, the Mario Matter episode number ninety-two. Thank you all so much for listening, Charlie. You said that we're getting a Nintendo Direct. You know, I'm saying this to close out the the show here. We're getting the Direct. What June nineteenth? You said nineteenth. 19th what what day of the Although week is I have that a, that is that is wednesday the 19th okay so that makes sense that's i think specifically for the fact i don't want it to be on the 26th because i will be at vidcon yeah they won't do it that late they they can't no they have no, no reason they, to they, it. they won't they have, they have no reason i bet you the entire direct is already everyone's done. everyone's gonna say it's the 12th everyone's gonna be it's gonna be on the 12th guys yeah but summer's game fest just like wrapped up i'm sure that they mm-hmm. You know, Nintendo's going to be nice for a change and not steal the thunder, right? Yeah. Because obviously, I think Silk Song is going to get announced last day of Summer Games Fest. It's going to be crazy. Anyways, I'm rambling. Yeah. June 19th. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, my guess is next Wednesday. So what's that? June? I don't even know. Uh, 12th today. 12th. There you go. Yeah, that's my mm-hmm. prediction. But yours is 19th. Either way, it could go either way. We'll have to see. 
I just feel like that, like yeah. that, like mid June, like the thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, wherever in there. I feel like it's like the their their prime mm-hmm. June direct. It's like the the E three week when that used yes. to used to happen. That's the yeah the dead E three week. I just feel like the entire thing is already done. They know what's going to be in it. All the trailers are done. I feel like yeah. it's it's done. It's just a matter of waiting to drop it. I think it is. So I think that they'll do it ASAP. Uh, obviously not this week because you mentioned Summer Games Fest. So I think next week. But I mean, it could also d- definitely be. June 19th, like you said, because, you know, to space out. We'll see. Things. So, yeah, we'll. I we'll don't see. think it's going to be the last week of June. So, yeah. We'll yeah. just have to, to hold off and, and wait and see. They also shouldn't do that because they have Luigi's Mansion coming out. And it's not a big that game, is true. but Super Monkey Ball also. Like, it's just kind of a packed week. You, you don't want to drop yeah, anything yeah. on that week. So, yeah. And Elden Ring DLC on the 21st. I didn't even think about that. But, yeah, there you go. Like, I will be just, playing that one. It's just a packed week. So, you don't, you yeah. don't really want to compete with that. Anyways, that is it. C.com. Where can they find you online? You can find me at C.com. Everywhere. That's it. Everywhere. That's it. Twitter. Uh, yeah. YouTube. Twitter, OnlyFans. YouTube. No. Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. I, I still, I, I'm paying the bills good right now. So yeah. we're. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go there yet not yet but thank you all so much for listening go check out charlie he makes awesome youtube shorts very awesome sauce and with that said he will be returning once again unless we start once beefing the... like drake and kendrick yeah yeah i can listen i compose all the music for my game you don't want to go you don't want to do that i i don't want to go there okay you don't want to don't want you do not want to do <laughs> i do not want to go there that yeah. would be you would i'll be, be back once the once the either direct happens or switch to something and uh yeah i'm gonna bring you on to talk about free to play mario kart because that's a big segment that's true i'm gonna bring that's you on for true. that we'll have to i see. think i think it's gonna happen we'll have to see when i bring you on next but that's it thank you all for listening Leave the show five stars, please. That 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 would be very much appreciated. And we'll see you six. all next. Le- yeah, yeah. Leave it six stars. I'll see you six all stars. next Saturday for more Nintendo goodness. And we should have another guest, not to replace you. I'm I'm just saying, like for the listeners. I'm getting replaced. No, no, no. no. I'll see you all then. <laughs> Adios. Bye.